Good morning. The 14B District Court is now in session. My name is Elaine Washington, and I'm the judge that will be presiding over this session. The court will call the case of the State of Michigan versus Bianca Schwab, case number 24S00190. Good morning, AP Rachel McDuffie for the people. Uh, good morning, Jeff Osmond, attorney for Bianca Schwab. Good morning. Please state your name, ma'am. Bianca Schwab. We're here for an arraignment pretrial today. Yes, yes, Your Honor, and we have a plea to enter as well. All right. Thank you for telling me that in advance. Um, as far as the arraignment is concerned, do you waive formal reading of the complaint? Yes, Your Honor. Waive formal reading. Stand mute. Thank you. Ma'am, in this particular case, you have waived formal reading of the complaint, but I do have to advise you of the maximum penalties you're charged with operating while intoxicated. That is a misdemeanor carrying maximum penalty of up to 93 days and or $500 fine plus court costs. Understanding that um, you are going to be entering into a plea today, I am going to just do the advice of rights all at the same time. So if someone could tell me what the plea is. Uh, judge, it would be a uh, plea to a reduced charge of operating while visibly impaired by the consumption of alcohol and what other, whatever other standard conditions of a plea of that nature are, and the original charge would then be dismissed. That's correct. Thank you. All right, ma'am. <clears throat> Is that your understanding you're going to be pleading to the operating while visibly um, impaired, which is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum penalty of up to 93 days and or $300 fine and carries, carries fewer uh, points with respect to your driver's license and fewer driver's license sanctions. Is that what you want to do? Yes, Your Honor. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So have you got? Yes. Thank you. You may lower your hand. I'm going to go over some rights that you have that I would have given you at the arraignment, but you're gonna be giving those up at this time. So I'm gonna go over, go over them with you at this time. <clears throat> you signed in the advice of rights form. It looks like here and have gone over these with your attorney. Um, looks like you signed this back on May 24th. You have the right to have a trial by a jury, at which time you can call witnesses to speak for you. You can get an order signed by this court to require that those witnesses come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question any and all witnesses that are called against you. And you have the right to be a witness for yourself, or you could choose to remain silent. If you did choose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. And in addition to that, you have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand you're going to be giving up all those rights and you're not going to be having a trial of any sort? Yes, Your Honor. And do you also understand that there's no automatic right to appeal this decision? So the decision you're making at this time in all likelihood is going to stick with you? Yes. And then um, additionally, if you were on probation, parole, or bond when this happened on March 16th of 2024, you could still be in violation of those probation, paroles, or bond. Were you on any of those? No. And then finally, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could have immigration consequences. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Thank you. As to the charge of operating while visibly impaired, how do you plead? Guilty. Anyone promise you anything other than what we placed on the record to get you, get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Anyone? No. One moment, please. Testing. Testing. We're back up. I apologize. Thank you. Anyone threatening you in any way, shape, or form? No, Your Honor. And then um, on or about March the 16th of 2024, were you operating a motor vehicle at the vicinity of I-94 here in in Ypsilanti Township? Yes. 
and while you were operating that motor vehicle, were you under the influence of alcohol? Yes. Was there a BAC test done? 0 0.10, Your Honor. Rough test. Do you stipulate to that, Ms. McDuffie? Yes. Sorry about that, Your Honor. I believe that's correct. I can't open my file for some reason, but I, I know that I checked it and it was around there. So that's the right. Thank you. All right. I find that there is a factual basis for the plea that has been willingly and knowingly made. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Eisman? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Sentencing in this matter will be on July 15th. Does that work with the calendar? Uh, Judge, what time would that be? 10 a.m. Oh, um, that, that should be. I have a 9.30 sentencing in Plymouth on Zoom, but uh, that should be okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ma'am, you need to make keep an appointment with the probation department to have an assessment done. I'm going to give you their phone number. Everybody else on the call should write down the phone number at this time. So everyone, please write down the phone number. Okay. 734-483-7336. Please call them tomorrow after 9 a.m. to schedule an um, opportunity to set up that appointment. Okay, ma'am? Okay, thank you. Does require paperwork being sent through the snail mail, so it takes some time, so you should get started as soon as possible. It's a condition of your bond to get it done. Okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, Your Honor, one more thing. Uh, so this is a first offense, and I don't believe, I don't recall if there was a request for testing. I'm not necessarily asking for anything um, elaborate, but maybe random ETGs or something like that. Yeah, she's got no prior record. One moment, please. Yes, um, I guess. So you just, I'm going to do ETGs two times per month. Ms. McDuffie, is that satisfactory to you? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So, ma'am, you do need to go to community corrections, um, and they're going to schedule an opportunity for you to uh, get set up to do your ETG testing, okay? Okay, thank you. Do you have the contact info for community corrections? You get a probation when you call probation. Um, you should have your first test within 24 hours. Maybe we should give her the number now. Is it? Um, Okay, one moment. That you just had up. Put in the info, but maybe not. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Ms. Straub, are you present? Yes, I am. No, I, you, I know that sounded like you. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ms. Schaub. <laughs> Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. How are you, Ms. Straub? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah. Do you have a community corrections phone number? Sure. Yes. 734-973-1111. Um, all right. And ma'am, um, you are being arraigned today and did the plea at the same time. So I, Ms. Uh, Ms. McDuffie uh, was correct to ask me to at least set some type of bond. You also need to have no alcohol or uh, illegal drugs of any sort. You need to show up each and every court date from henceforth. If you leave the state, you need to get permission of the court to do that and no further contact with the criminal justice system. Do you understand all that, ma'am? Yes. All right. Thank you. You're all set now. Have a good day. Thank you.
State of Michigan versus Ibrahim Mohammed, case number 24S, 24S00194. Christian McGuffey for the people. Assistant Public Defender Sandy White on behalf of Ibrahim Mohammed. Mr. Mohammed, please state your name. Good morning. This is Ibrahim. Thank you. My understanding is that Mr. Mohammed needs a special translator. That is what he has told me, Your Honor. Is that true, Mr. Mohammed? Yes. Yes, please. How do you spell the, the name of uh, I need to uh, what's the translator? How do you spell it? T I G I. Thanks, sorry. He spelled it for me as, and let me know if this is right, Mr. Muhammad. Okay. T T oh. What's it called? I Please. Can someone say the name of it out loud? P. Tigrinya? Yes, Tigrinya. Yes. All right. Thank you. I think You're we welcome. have a spelling over here. I just wanted you to say it out loud so I can make a record of it. I don't know that we can find that type of a translate where we'll do the best we can. We can't do that today, obviously. Speak any other. We will be asking for an adjournment. July 1st. At 9 a.m. July 1st, 9 a.m. Brian will continue. Miss um, White, have you tried to get a Tigrinya translator yet? No, he just told me this morning that he needs an interpreter. You should try to speak to him and the translator prior to the next court date. I will. Thank you. We'll see you on July 1st, sir, at 9 o'clock a.m. Okay. Can you ask you, excuse me? I am a homeless. I don't have a home. I live in the car. What should I do up to the July? Sorry, what, sir? Yeah, I, am, I live in the car. What are you asking me about that, sir? Now, can I buy my home or what should I do? Your Honor, I believe he's asking to address bond. The, um, I, my hesitance is that he seems to be able to understand everybody pretty well, but if he needs an interpreter, I don't know that we can. But what is, is there a part of his bond that needs to be addressed regarding his homelessness? He's asking to return to the home. I think that he is um, staying in his car to for the no-go to. So, it, I mean, I, I'm not trying to proceed with the plea today, or but if he can either understand us or not, I, I don't know what state we're in in terms of trying to call the case and do anything. We can't address the case today if he needs a translator. We don't have access to a to green yet translator today. I guess what I will do, Your Honor, is attempt to talk to him this week, and if I need to, I'll file a motion to address the bond, and we can come in soon. Yeah, we can address it via step offline. We see you, ma'am. We're going to address it offline. That, okay, that sounds like the best course of action to me. Was he, is she here to ad address the bond? Yes, Your Honor. 
Oh, I guess she's here. Just a second, Mr. Mohammed. Hello? Ma'am, I haven't called on you yet. Okay, sorry. So are you going to stipulate to whatever it is that they're requesting at this time, Ms. McDuffie? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. It'll be put in order through stipulation that I will sign whatever it is that the request is, Mr. Muhammad. All right, next case, we're done with this case. State of Michigan versus Zachary Morris, case number 24S00035. Great to meet you, for the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Alexander Hermanowski with and on behalf of Zachary Morris. Zachary, please state your name for the record. You need to unmute yourself first. Zachary Morris. Thank you. Your Honor, may we approach briefly? You may.
All right, the court will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Alexis Jenkins, case number 24S00181. Good morning, Your Honor. Alexander Hermanowski with and on behalf of Alexis Jenkins, um, standing in for Sam Bernstein. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, please state your name for the record. Alexis uh, Brown Jenkins. Brown Jenkins. Good morning, sir. This is very... And I was muted. Sorry, Rachel McDuffie for the people. This is time and date set for pretrial. This time I'm asking for the next available final settlement conference date. And Mr. Jenkins understands he's giving up all rights to any type of a plea offer in this case once it's set for a final settlement conference. I understand. He does, Your Honor. July 25th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Jury selection, August 9th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. And then if I could have a breakout room with Mr. Um, Mr. Morris, that'll be appreciated. Yes, you may. Mr. Jenkins, you can leave now. Have a good day, sir. State of Michigan versus Kimberly Jackson, case numbers 23S00407, 24S00196, and 197. Thank you, people. Who's representing Kimberly Jackson, please? I'll step in. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Kimberly Jackson. Ms. Kimberly Jackson, please state your name. Kimberly Jackson. Thank you. We're here for pretrials on all these cases. Yes, Your Honor. We are asking for an adjournment so that we can get discovery on our new cases. No objection to the adjournment for that purpose. We had a couple bond violations before Ms. Uh, Jackson was out on the bench warrant before the new cases came up. I think it was for a failure to test. I don't know if it was just the baseline that we were asking for. And uh, of course the new cases are violations because there are no contact violations with the person in the other case and the new offenses themselves. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Probably the testing one is, um, yeah, I think there was just a baseline, if I'm not mistaken. Do we have a current infection? All right, so defendant is here on a pretrial and a bond violation. I I don't have the community corrections. Oh wait, I see it. From August of 23? Yes. I see. She got bench warranted on August 28th for the violation from August 11th. Ma'am, are you testing now? Yes, I went and tested when I got out of jail. The old, it, it, I, I find that that's moot at this point. There's no need to arraign her on that one. But ma'am, just so you know, um, interesting question may come up at this point. Her new contacts was when she was on bench warrant status. The interesting question as to whether she's in bond violation or not, if she's on bench warrant status. You know the answer to that one, Ms. McDuffie? Well, 
I think the violation is going to be a matter of contact because the new offenses are with the party. I know what the violation yeah. is supposed to be, but she mm -hmm. was on bench warrant status. So is she technically on bond? I would say yes, because if she, her bond conditions didn't, didn't stop. Um, it's just that she was in violation for that aspect of it, which caused a warranty issue. So I don't think that the, 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 the conditions would apply any differently. All right. I'll arraign her on that when we come back the next time after um, you both get a chance to look at it and can advise me as to what the law says about that whole issue. Okay. But the reality is we can't proceed on a no contact without addressing the actual underlying offenses. So... So how long do you need, July 8th or July 1st? July 8th, Your Honor. July 8th, 2024, at 9 a.m. for um, pretrial and arraignment on bond violation. Your Honor, I do have a question. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Um, so I am willing to test. I currently don't have a job. My boyfriend is willing to help me, but he gets paid bi-weekly. Is it possible for us to change the drop times to every two weeks? Instead of every week, I just don't have the money for it. And I would I don't want to get a warrant out for my arrest again. So I want to be able to do things properly this time. Are there um, allegations of, I think there must have been since we, left it in on August 14th. Are there allegations of alcohol? So, Your Honor, in the older case, um, there was alcohol present. Ms. Jackson stated that she doesn't drink. We know that Mr. Banda does from this case and previous cases. So um, I think that's why it was at least the baseline that I was asking for, but it doesn't necessarily, I don't have any objection to that being reduced. If Mr. Banda is the boyfriend that she's referred to who's able to help uh -huh. her, Stacks. Okay. I was like, you may not want to make those types of statements, given what we just discussed regarding bonds. So um, I don't have any objection to testing being reduced. I haven't, of course, seen any results from the one she just had, but I don't, it doesn't necessarily need to be every week at this point. What do I do if Mr. Banda contacts me? Because since this incident, I Ms. broke Jackson. up with him. We were... Yes. Ms. Jack, your attorney will give you a call and discuss that with you. I just want to know what do I do if he contacts me? That's it. Oh, you do not respond. Okay. Testing one time per month for ETG. Bond is otherwise continued. We'll see you back here on July 8th, ma'am, at 9 a.m. All right, you guys have a good one. Thank you, you too.
State of Michigan versus Derek Lovely, 24S00145, as well as Ypsilanti Township, tickets number 20W001900, 21S388066 A and B. This is for the people. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Here. Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Derek Lovely on the pretrial. Mr. Lovely, uh, please go ahead and state your name now. Derek Lovely. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now, as, far, as far as the pretrial, there are no offers. Uh, we are going to set this matter for a final settlement conference. I'm sorry. Um... Did I have that wrong? No, I just wanted to uh, just confirm. Okay. Uh, yes. I just want to make sure I wasn't confusing it with another case. That's correct, Ms. White. Okay. <laughs> Final settlement. settlement conference will be July 25th, 2024, 11 a.m. Jury selection will be August 9th, 2024, at 8.30 Bond will continue on the pretrial. Mr. Lovely, are you making your payments that you're supposed to be making monthly? You're supposed to be making $50 per month payment on these tickets, sir. Ma'am, I, I did not. I, I can make it today, right now. I I had to turn myself in this week. It's, I had, so this this case violated two of my probations and I warrants and everything. I'm just, I have, I have not. I will make it today. It will be today. I can actually do it now as soon as we get off the phone here. I think it's fifty dollars, right? It is fifty dollars per month, correct. I will I will do it today. I'm I'm sorry. That's okay. July twenty-fifth, two thousand twenty-four at nine a.m. It's the next court date. And make that payment like you said you would, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Have a good day, Mr. Lovely. Too. Thank you. Bye -bye. State of Michigan versus Dominique Taylor, case number 23F00504. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Hugo Mack, appearing on behalf of Ms. Taylor. Good morning, Dominique Taylor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, we're here for a review today. Yes, Judge. She said that she was still enrolled in, uh, she's registered for the Crossroads class, but she hasn't completed it yet. Has that been done? Yes, Ms. Taylor. It was last time. I'm sorry? Yes, it was done the prior time we came to court. It is complete, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Johnson. All right, thank you. All right. All right. It seems like everything is done then. What we'll do is discharge you from probation and waive any additional. Um, Your, um, Your Honor, we had an agreement that um, it was not early discharge, but that she could convert to now reporting at the halfway point if everything was done. Yes, she did. All right. Thank you. Defendant's probation is converted to non-reporting. So what that means for you, ma'am, is you don't have to report to probation anymore. Um, but if you, in fact, have any issues arise, then you would be in violation of your probation because you're still on probation. So... Ms. Johnson, are you recommending still waiving the balance of the probation oversight fees? Not, um, I believe she has paid everything. Let me double check. All her fees have been paid in full, so 
it will just go to that reporting as of today. All right, thank you. You don't have to report anymore. You're all set. And I won't see you back here. You'll be discharged early as long as you get in no additional trouble. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'll take care. You too. Ipsland Township versus Venetia Quarles, case number 24T00192. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender, Happy Lieb, on behalf of Ms. Quarles. Thank you, Ms. Quarles. Good morning. Please state your name. Venetia Quarles. Thank you. Do you have to speak out today? Yes, sir. We're going to be requesting adjournment in order to receive some discovery. No objection. Free trials adjourned through July 1st, 2024 at 9 a.m. Bond is continued. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. I will call the matters of Lori Williams, case numbers 24S00172 and 23B2426. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Lori Williams. Ms. Lori Williams, please state your name. Lori Williams. Thank you. We're here for a pretrial and bond violation. I'm sorry, I'm looking at something. I think we addressed the bond violation issue already. She's been, her address was changed, correct? That was part of it. We're here for a sentencing and a pretrial and the, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, the new case, the, the yes, we did address that part of it. Uh, the other part is probably the newer case itself. Um, as a bond violation, because that just that offense date was just May, and so uh, her sentencing has been adjourned because the other case has to be addressed before she can be sentenced. I'm sorry. What are you saying about the bond violation? I think the other aspect of her bond violation was the new case itself. So the newer case has an offense date of just last month, and the case she's being sentenced on is quite a bit older and it, it occurred the new case offense date is after she entered the plea on the former the bond violation that i'm looking at is for 24s00172 um but you're not arraigning her on the new case as a bond violation i think that has already happened Yeah, I don't think there's anything new. Okay. All right. What are we going to do on the pretrial? Oh, uh, Your Honor, the offer from the people was to plead guilty as charged and have a concurrent probation with the other case. Is that correct, Ms. McDuffie? That's correct. And I would agree to no upfront jail if that were the case. Ms. Williams is going to plead guilty and take advantage of that offer. He does understand that it still could be a bond violation of the 23 FB 2426, correct? We did not discuss that um, in that, that way, Your Honor, I'll be honest. Um, I guess I would have to ask what is your honor most likely to do? I don't know the facts of this new A and B to be able to, to say that at this point, to be honest. Okay. Um, open to hear what they are. Can we approach Brianna, please? 
that was just going to say maybe we should do that. <laughs>
All right, the court will recall the matters of the state of Michigan versus Lori Williams. After speaking with counsel, counsel has advised that she needs to adjourn because she needs to speak with her client about the court's um, position in this case, which is that I'm not willing to make any agreements with respect to jail time on this case um, without seeing a report from probation. So at this point, I will give you an adjournment. This July 1st work. You're muted. Yes, that's fine. July 1st, 9 a.m. Bond is continued on both cases. Now, many further violations of your bond, and I'm going to put you in custody. Do you understand? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I understand. I thought the bond violation was addressed last Tuesday, was it? I'm just a little confused, but maybe I need to talk to Sandra right about that. Yes, you do. Okay. Do you want to talk to your client now, Ms. White? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Put you in a breakout room. Or we call the matter of Zachary Morris, 24S00035. Great to meet up for the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Alexander Hermanowski with on behalf of Zachary Morris. Zachary, please um, unmute your microphone and state your name for the record again. Zachary Morris. Thank you. Your Honor, I... sorry. I spoke with um, Ms. McDuffie and we have come to an agreement. Um, he's also going to be pleading guilty to his bond violations today. Um, the agreement that we have in place is he will be pleading guilty to both counts of DV under uh, the 4A statute on both counts. Now, also, we've asked the court to consider um, that you release him um, on, on a bond after he starts getting treatment to continue treatment outside the jail if possible. Because I don't, I'm sure that there is a wait when he's in custody. All right, thank you, I'll consider that. Mr. Morris, it's yes, my understanding ma that you're gonna be pleading guilt. Well, first of all, let me arrange you on the bond violation, sir. It alleges that you um, tested positive for cocaine on April 25th, April 30th, May 14th, May 15th, and May 16th. One second. Yes, um, those are all violations of your buying conditions of having no um, uh, illegal substances. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, ma'am. It's my understanding you're going to be pleading guilty as charged in this case, and you're going to be pleading to the violations today. So you're entitled to have a hearing on the violations, at which time for this show that you, in fact, did violate your bond. Your bond could be revoked. Do you understand that part? Yes, ma'am. It's my understanding you're going to be waiving that right and pleading guilty to the bond violation as well? Yes, ma'am. All right. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. May lower your hand. All right, sir. I'm going to go with some rights you have that you're going to be giving up by entering into this plea. Please stop me if you have any questions or if you feel like you need to speak with your attorney again. You have the right to have a trial by a jury, at which time you can call witnesses to speak for you. You can get an order signed by this court to require those witnesses to come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question any uh, witnesses that are called against you, and you have the right to be a witness for yourself or you could choose to remain silent. If you did choose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. In addition to that, you have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand all those rights? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand you're gonna be giving up all those rights and you're not gonna be having a trial of any sort? Yes, ma'am. You also understand that there's no automatic right to appeal this decision. So the decision you're making today in all likelihood is going to stick with you. 
Yes, ma'am. And in addition to that, sir, if you were on probation, parole, or bond when this happened on January 29th, 2024, you could be in violation of that probation, parole, or bond. Were you on any of those? Yes, ma'am. Who you on um, probation? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't. All right. Thank you. And then um, finally, sir, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could have immigration consequences. Do you understand that part? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. On or about January 29th, 2024, um, were you at the vicinity of 147 Jerome Ave here in Ypsilanti Township, sir? Yes, ma'am. And while you were there, did you, was there a Lisa Bevins present? Bevins? I'm sorry, Lisa Bevins? Yes, ma'am. And who is Lisa Bevins to you? My ex wife. Okay. And um, while he, the two of you were there, did you hit her or batter her in some kind of way? I pushed her. All right. So, um, how many times did you push her? Uh, I only pushed her once. Your Honor, um, may I applaud to hear the witness? You may. So, Zachary, um, you're aware that you, there are two counts of uh, uh, domestic violence here. Um, so yeah. you, you, did you push her? I, yeah, I pushed her and then uh, on my way out the door, I pushed her again. And then you pushed her again a second time. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'm satisfied that there's a factual basis for the plea. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? People are satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. As far as the bond violation is concerned, sir, is it true that you tested positive for cocaine all those times? Yes, ma'am. I find that there's a factual basis for that as well. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hermanowski, are you satisfied with both? Yes, Your Honor. Is your client working on getting into treatment? I'm sorry, Your Honor, I couldn't hear you is well. Your client, is your client working on getting into treatment? He hasn't. I, I don't know. Mr. Morris, are you seeking treatment at this time? Uh, I uh, was trying to, but with the tether, it was a little bit hard. I'm sorry, what? Yes, I was trying to, but I wasn't able to get there or start the program. Sentencing in this case will be on July 8th, 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. Defendant is, I'm sorry, 11 o'clock a.m. in person. Sir, you should be in treatment by then. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. If not, then we'll have to do it the hard way. I understand. You need to contact probation department and schedule an appointment to um, have a pre-sentence investigation report done. Also, I'm gonna let you know if I get another positive test, then I'm just gonna issue a bench warrant and put you immediately in, in jail. Do you understand? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. All right, I'll see you on July 8th. Did you write down the phone number for probation when I gave it out earlier? I'm going to uh, send it as well. All right. I have, thank a, I have the number. All right, thank you. Call them tomorrow. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. McDuffie. Have a great mm -hmm. day. Thank you. State of Michigan versus Shatia Gibbs, 23 FB 1198. Christian McDuffie for the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Christina Costantino appearing on behalf of Shatia Gibbs. Ms. Gibbs, if you are present on the Zoom, can you please unmute and state your name for the record? Your Honor, I, I don't believe she has logged in this morning. I unfortunately have not been able to make any contact with Ms. Gibbs. So I am at this time unsure of her whereabouts or why she is not present today. Thank you. Ms. McDuffie. 
Your Honor, unfortunately, there is a recommendation for five days of jail for the violation um, that we're here to address today. I'm surprised to hear that Ms. Gibbs has not been in touch with her attorney. And um, it, sounds, it just seems like she's just absconding in, in, in just MIA um, across the board. So I would request a bench warrant given that no one can reach her apparently. Bench warrant to issue $5,000, 10%. Thank, Thank you, you, Your Honor. Have a good rest of your day. You too.